Hello friends, Nikki here and welcome back to Chamonix Man Final Lead with the best of the best Alexander Megos, Martin Stranek, Sean McCall, Jakob Schubert, William Bosey, Kai Harada, 16 year old Alberto Genes Lopez from Spain in his first senior lead World Cup final and of course the man himself Adam Andra. And we're gonna start with Alex Megos and we will also start in the route. I will not talk about the start yet. So Alex Megos is in the second panel out of the third different angles on this big wall in Chamonix in front of the Mont Blanc. And he's taking a break here with a toke on the right side and he's climbing really really solid up to this point he has this typical powerful climbing style we all know he's strong he's experienced he won last year in Briançon and he's also really really motivated and didn't look like he hesitated or lost any power especially up to this point he looked really really fit and he still looks fit he still has one minute and 30 left to go for a couple of moves moves solidly over the lip He's looking for a foothold for the left. It slips, unfortunately, and he's fucking angry. He's really, really mad, and and he didn't even really look like he needed to fight. He just slipped with his right foot, left foot, and fell at the start at the lip uh, towards the third panel of the wall. Really high up already, even though he was only the first starter. And up to this point, you didn't know like whether the route was too hard or too easy, whether we would see another fiasco like at the women's category. So let's take a look at the next starter. Martin Stranek, uh, the second Czech climber in the final, incredibly strong. You've seen him in a couple of Boulder World Cup finals a couple of years ago. And according to Adam Ondra, he's also one of the only full-time working climbers out there in the game who worked really hard in this section. We didn't see it yet climbed from uh, Alex Megos, but we can see that Martin went feet first, which looks pretty tricky because he has to do a lot of mini movements to switch his body back into another position. Looks really spectacular and we can see that he's fighting and right now he turned around. He doesn't take any break right now. He continues straight he tries to shake out, now he continues straight to the right side underneath the lip and tries to cross over and falls. We will compare how Martin climbed it and how Alex did it. Alex started out of the split position going into this volume, sea of volumes. He climbed straight forward, he did one move, two moves, then he climbed back because he needed to clip so so far the clip is maybe the third move and then he goes straight into this black hole as an undercling while and then he shakes so he needed 21 seconds for this whole section while Martin starts now where I started uh, counting the clock for Alex Alex is still shaking and taking a break while Martin goes feet forward, does way more moves, which is way more exhausting. And we've seen it before. At this moment right now, Alex was already in the position where he's shaking off while Martin still struggles to find a way to turn around. Now he turns around, is in this black undercling hold. Alex is holding onto as well on the right side, but he doesn't find a really good rest or a really good position. Continues straight to the right, does not swap his feet. We can see that Alex on the left side swapped his feet. He's standing on his left foot and his hip is even moving closer to the wall when he moves. On the other hand, Martin on the left side, his step stays far away from the wall, drops off and while he's crossing over, he falls. So sometimes it's about choosing the right way, choosing the right beta and also climbing it quite quick. Sean McCall on the other hand is also a really fast and quick climber. We've seen the section to this black dish and hold here. Sean McCall was the only one climbing to it. After this he came to this volume section here as well moved quite solidly and then he slipped or we couldn't see it pr quite properly so we will take a look now from this angle and we'll compare what he is doing differently before he fell. 
First of all, they are both moving with the left hand in a left side pull on to the next volume, which is facing to the left side. So you need an opposing force on the left side so your body doesn't slip and rotate to the left. This is why Jakob on the right side swings out of this controlled position first with his left foot over to the left side while Sean moves straight with his hand first. He doesn't have the opposing force of his foot to help him stabilize his body and he falls. A really uncommon mistake I have to say for Sean McCall. I honestly don't know what happened there and I don't think we will see a mistake like this anytime soon again. I stopped in the movement again to show you this still where it's quite obvious that Jakob is going to the left looking for the safe position while Sean's hip is open and he's only standing with the right foot so his body rotates his hip is too far away from the wall he doesn't even get the hold he's coming a little bit too short and because of this he falls unfortunately. We can also see how easy Jakob did this move. There's another way to do it. Alex showed it right here. We do the split. It looks really Jean-Claude Van Damme style but it's easy for Alex to save some time, power and look for the hold he wants to use. Jakob needed way more time than Alex Megos. We knew that Alex arrived here with 1 minute 30 or 40 left and he fell at the move to the volume above the lip. And we will compare his position to Alex's position, which is slightly different. Alex's right foot is on the right side of the volume, while Jakob's right foot is on the small hold on the left triangle. So this means that Alex's hip is further to the right, closer to the wall, to the volume. We can see that his shoulder is higher than Jakob's shoulder. Also his arm is slightly more bent like the angle. We can see that Jakob's elbow is facing outwards and doesn't have the stabilization which Alex's shoulder and uh, arm provides. He also moves higher because of this with his right hand while Jakob reaches the right hand hold way too low due to his worst position on this crux section. He also needed way longer, maybe fatigue kicked in and you do stupid decisions. Not really stupid, but it just happens when the pump kicks in. So after four climbers, Alex Magos is still leading and uh, just with one move more than Jakob. Four climbers to go. Next one is William Bosey from Great Britain who climbed easily and quite quick up to this section. Then he did a small minor mistake, which we will take a look at later again. Kai Harada slipped a little bit around here. Then he jumped up to this black sloper and he also slipped with his left foot. Couldn't keep his left toe hook in and bye bye Boulder World Champ. So we were able to see only two more climbers, one of them one of them, Alberto Lopez from Spain in his Chris Sharma style, cutting loose, jumping, really powerful, looking around, cutting loose one more time, doing it like Alex Megos, I think, this section. And then he arrived at the lip and I think he lost a lot of power cutting loose and fighting and he fell on the move to the right. Only one climber left. Adam Andra, the man himself, the only one who was still able to kick Alex Megos off the throne and take the gold medal in Chamonix in his first lead World Cup this season. He skipped the first one because of a wrist injury. We can see that he has some tape around his left wrist. Doesn't matter or bother him that much. Still really strong crimping and climbing really solid and quite quick as well up to this point. So, and we can see the lower part of this route which was really easy and uh, really nice to see. Some slopers followed some, some crimps and now we arrive at this section where Sean McCall had to cut loose and jump over to the left to this uh, black dish where there's also I think a screw on in the dish or maybe it's just uh, chalk marks. 
Adam Ondra, on the other hand, is a little bit taller and can take a break here, reconsider and doesn't have to cut, cut loose. Into the stable position with a helo, crossing over, followed by this passage on mean tiny crimps to the right. Some other climbers had to fight really hard, but in the end it's just a passage, a way to get you pumped. This followed by the mean sloper. We can see that Adam Ondra has the left foot underneath and his right foot on top of the volume, which Kai Harada didn't do and slipped because of this. Only small mistakes, minor changes in a body position are so important when it comes to lead climbing. And now Adam Ondra arrived not even after two minutes at this volume section. He did the same what Jakob did, moved over with his left foot into the volumes, feet forward, which was, as we could have seen before, a little bit more powerful, also more moves and also it needed more time. But on the other hand, Adam climbed it really, really quick and he took the time compared to Martin Stranik to shake and take a break here like Alex did before you moved into the traverse to the right. Alex arrived here with 3.35 left on the clock so Adam isn't that much slower or vice versa and what's really important is when you have the experience you know when you have to climb really quick and do a good pace up to the next uh, point where you can take a break what Adam is doing right here before you move further to the right into the lip traverse. We can see that experience plays a big role because Adam had more power needed less time and instead of bumping with the right hand he crossed over with his left hand into the volume which looked really powerful maybe you needed to be a little bit taller but on the other hand Alex Magos bumped with his right hand and which shows experience and taking a break where there's like a point to rest are always nice to do. It's always a smart thing to take take a break in between. What Adam is doing right here with a heel hook on the right side, you could also do it with a toe hook. We've seen William Bosey falling on the next move to the left and this is due to a slight difference in his body position. While Adam Ondra is really tall and can go down with his left foot and his right heel as well in another stable position and then move to the left. Sorry for these uh, different frames. William Bosey had his left foot really high on the black triangle which we can see right here. His hip is uh, turning in a weird movement to the left. He's a little bit too bunched and can't make it over to the left. While Adam Onra was standing quite low, Alex Magos was doing the same what William did, just had his left foot lower. Now we can see that Adam already is on the third place, taking more time and the same as Alex, he has his right foot on the right side. He has a heel look which makes it easier to open the body afterwards and can he overtake Alex, he can easily. He just moved with his left hand higher on the volume before he moved his feet, bumped again with his left hand, then moved his right foot higher and now he moved into this mean section with these really, really tiny crimps. I think at this point he knew that he won, even though it's really hard to guess because there's not that much chalk on the holes. On the other hand, I think the MC would have told the audience already and I think his right foot is a little bit too high here. It's hard to get over this point and he fell right there and the roar of the crowd should have told him that he won. Typical Adam Ondra, incredible happy about this effort and I have to say really good climbing. While on the other hand I think if Alex wouldn't have screwed up the move above the volume going over the lip. I think he would have finished the route at all because he's 
He looked way stronger. He's also really, really good on these tiny, mean crimps. But anyway, Adam Onra won this battle this round in Chamonix, climbed three moves more, and we have a perfect ranking. Eight climbers who fell all on a different point on the wall. I think the route was really interesting, was able to provide us with a lot of different movements. I think we were also able to see how different ways to climb this route needed more time, more power and how experience, determination and just pure strength and skill just just made it a little bit easier for you to climb quicker and more efficiently and save power, especially Jakob's shoulder position was maybe due to the fatigue and this made him end up in third place. Alex, due to the slight uh, mistake of the slipping foot in second, and a worthy winner, Adam Onra. But on the other hand, they are not that far behind Adam Onra. We could see, I think, Alex Megos is physically strong on crims. He climbed so confident, and we all know that Jakob is an animal a warrior, a really powerful climber. They are all three are really experienced. And we were also missing Tomoa Narazaki and Doman Skofic in the final. I think there are so many more climbers who are really, really close to those three climbers. Anyway, congratulations Adam Ondra for winning in Chamonix. And I cannot wait for the World Championships in Tokyo to start. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me. My name is Nikki. If you want to support us, sub the channel, support me on my Patreon channel or just leave a comment or a like and we will see and listen to each other after the next Boulder Lead World Cup Championship, blah, blah, blah. I'll get it done soon. I'll hurry up, promise. And thank you so much. See you next time.